on your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of, of Abel Mahala, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel. All the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of the Lord. We will read from Psalm 85 responsively by half verse. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our hand. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. A reading from the Epistle to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim, because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowd, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It's a ghost. And he cri they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Jesus answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said to him, come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came to Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and he began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith. Why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Take my lips, O Lord, and speak through them. Take our minds and think with them. Take our hearts and set them on fire for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. I wonder, did you happen to catch the article from last Monday's Richmond Times-Dispatch about the near-death experience of Maur Maury Pearson on the sea? The story tells about this man, Maury Pearson, who actually is a resident of the Fan District here in Richmond, and two other men sailing from Deltaville to Reykjavik, Iceland. About two-thirds of the, the, tr of the way through the trip, they ran into a terrible storm. The waves were running about 18 to 24 feet. Imagine that, if you will. I think that's about as probably is about as high as the balcony here, balcony level, the waves coming at them that, that high. Winds were gusting up to 60 miles per hour. That's just short of hurricane strength. And in the wee hours of July 26th, 300 miles from the nearest land, a rogue wave crashed into their sailboat, smashing the rigging, blowing out the portholes, and rolling the boat upside down. All, can you imagine how that might feel? All three of them upside down in the boat under the water. Thankfully, the boat continued to roll and righted itself. They immediately set off their emergency beacon, and eventually the Icelandic Coast Guard picked up the signal, and a rescue boat was dispatched. Asked later about the experience, Pearsall uttered this understatement. I wasn't looking for that much adventure. <laughs> I'm always fascinated about the power of water. When I'm at the beach, I marvel at the almost transcendent quality of the surf crashing in a never-ending way upon the shoreline. It's no wonder that some of the most compelling stories in the Scripture, like Noah and the flood, or like the Israelites walking through the Red Sea to get to freedom, have to do with the overwhelming force of water. 
I remember one of, the, one of the hardest things I ever had to do was while serving at the church in Annapolis, Maryland, officiating at a memorial service for two young sailors who had drowned in a sudden, very sudden storm on the Chesapeake Bay. As human beings, we have a great reverence, or at least a respect, for the primal power of water. Lord Byron once wrote, man marks the earth with ruin, but his control stops at the shoreline. I think that's somewhat profound. Man marks the world with ruin, but his, his control stops at the shoreline. In other words, the water always wins. The water is always going to overwhelm. You cannot defeat the sea. Though the waters thereof rage and swell, says the psalmist. And we sing from time to time, Lord, hear us when we cry to Thee for those in peril on the sea. It is against this background that we hear afresh the story of the go- in the Gospel of Matthew of Jesus walking on the water. Of all the stories about Jesus in the Bible, this is perhaps the most memorable because of the miraculous imagery of Jesus coming to his disciples walking on the top of the water. The biblical account of this event provides us with some of the most compelling imagery in all of Scripture, and it speaks deeply to our need as mere mortals. Let me recap. It's night. Between three o'clock and six o'clock in the morning, Jesus has sent the disciples across the water on their own. They're all together in the boat some distance from the shore when they are battered, battered by the waves. The sea is becoming rough. The storm is brewing, but they've had a long day. They are tired. They are exhausted. And most of them are asleep. But suddenly someone sees something coming toward them. What is it, a ghost? Is it some dark and malevolent creature of the night? In a culture in which it's not uncommon to believe in demons and evil spirits, they are struck with mortal fear. Panic is about to set in, but then they hear that calm voice of Jesus, take heart, it is I, have no fear. Just those several words can change our world, our lives. Take heart, it is I, have no fear. Biblical scholars have used this story to show that Jesus, as the Son of God, as divinity himself, is sovereign over every aspect of the created order, even the forces of nature. He has the power to calm the storm and walk on water. And he calms the storminess of nature, and as he is able to do that, he is also able to calm the storms in our hearts. How often we are in the same condition as the the disciples as they crouch in the boat. We crouch in our own boats, feeling the sea in the midst of the problems and struggles which, like the raging waters, can threaten to overwhelm us. The water in which the disciples sat represents to us all that is troublesome and problematic about our world, all the ambivalence in our our world, especially in this age. It is the kind of thing that though we might struggle mightily against, we can never seem to get the upper hand because after all, we are only mortal. So the sea is a symbol of all that is dark and destructive and chaotic in our lives. And into the midst of our fear, here comes Jesus walking on top of the water, transcending the problems of the world, and at the same time pointing to a more glorious reality. And then there's Peter. He's an important part of this story, impetuous Peter. Peter, the first to get his feet wet, to get into the water with Jesus. 
It makes sense when we think about it because Peter was the first disciple to be called, along with his brother Andrew, to join Jesus' adventurous band of itinerants. He was the first to lay down his fishing nets and to follow Jesus. When Jesus asked, who do people say that I am? It was Peter who was the first to declare, you are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. For that Jesus says, and you are Petrus, you are the rock, and on this rock I will build my church. Peter, who represents all of us in the story, I believe, says to the mysterious image, Lord, if it is you, bid me come to you on the water, to which Jesus says simply, come. The great promise of the story, I think, is right there. It is in the promise that we can walk with Christ on top of whatever sea of troubles we experience in our lives. That's the promise. What are you troubled by? It's Sunday morning worship is a time to be honest with ourselves, if nothing else. A problematic diagnosis, some medical issue, a difficult relationship with family members, something that's intractable, issues of addiction for those we love, Or this weekend, we look at anxiety over society values or lack of values, as we observed in Charlottesville yesterday. I have to say that as, a, as an alum of the University of Virginia myself, someone who's walked through those parks that the demonstrations took place in, my heart was heavy last night. My heart was sick at what was taking place at a, in a town where I spent four years of my life. But the gospel lesson for today says that we can transcend all the frightening issues we have to deal with and draw nearer to the kingdom of God. Peter saw the wind and the waves and, and he began to sink. So he shouted, Lord, save me. And Jesus did not let him sink. Immediately he reached out his hand and buoyed him up, saying, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Didn't you know that I would never let one of my father's children come to harm? As we become called into greater in intimacy with Christ and are asked to walk on the water with him like Peter, it's easy to become afraid. It's easy to look around at all the things that can panic us and say, I just can't do it. I cannot do it. I'm sinking. In his book, How to Live Through a Bad Day, author Jack Hayford captured how we feel, I think, he, when he wrote, when, when you're in the middle of a bad day or worse, when you feel you have lost touch with heaven and are mystified in your loneliness, aim your hard questions at God, not man. Why? Why? because in life's darkest hours, there are usually no human beings with adequate answers. Counselors may analyze, associates may sympathize, experienced friends may empathize, but finite minds and feeble flesh can never satisfy us with the presence we seek, for we truly cry out for God himself, not answers. When bad day blues turn black with unanswerable and questions and everything you thought you knew backfires, forget human philosophies. Cry out to God. He is never far away. Jesus Christ is God's way of never being far away. Jesus is the manner in which God chose to incarnate his love and compassion for us. The story of Jesus walking on the water is not so much a story about Peter's faith or lack of it. It's about ours. Whenever we find ourselves sinking into our own sea of troubles, let us listen 
for that voice of Jesus who is out there calling to us, take heart, it is I. Have no fear. Amen. Standing, let us affirm our faith in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us kneel as you are able, as we open our hearts to God. Gracious God, we pray today for the church, for the men and women of faith throughout the world who strive to serve you in word and deed. We pray for Metropolitan Richmond, the Commonwealth of Virginia, and these United States. By your Holy Spirit, guide our leaders and all government agencies to serve your people with integrity. We pray for our world and for refugees everywhere. We pray for our partners in mission and outreach locally and around the world. We pray for those who are oppressed and all who struggle for freedom and justice. We pray for peace among the nations and for an end to war. We pray for our enemies and for all who would do us harm. We pray for the women and men of our armed forces who serve in places of conflict. Keep them safe and grant them courage to serve with honor. We pray for those who are poor and suffering, for those who are lost and unloved, for those in prison, and for those who live without hope. We pray for our families and friends, for those who are sick, for those who are elderly, and those who have died, that all who have asked for our prayers will know your healing power.
forgiveness for those who hate us and forgiveness for the hatred we have for others. Almighty and ever living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family, especially for our new rector, John Carr, and his family. Grant us all things necessary for our common life and bring us all to be of one heart and mind to feel kindness. We give thanks to the lives and ministries of all who celebrate their birthdays this week, especially Charles Tinsman, Jennifer Rector, Heather Turton, Jack Craig, and Carol Bell, who celebrate their birthday today. <coughs> In the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, we remember those who died yesterday, and Dylan McGee, and Lee Stephen, and Brad Cohen, who died recently, and Florence Northfield Baldwin, W. Preston Baldwin, W. Preston Baldwin Jr., and Barbara Hawkins Baldwin, whose memory defies at the altar of heaven. Grant, O God, that your holy and life giving spirit may so move every human heart and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may come, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease. That our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. Turning to page 833 of the Book of Common Prayer. Page 833. Let us say together the prayer attributed to St. Francis. Page 833. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, you have taught us to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly before you. Make us doers of your word, that throughout the world your name may be praised and your people served. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Good morning, St. Jamesers. A warm welcome to all of you here this morning, especially to any visitors who might be with us today. We we'll really invite you to either fill out one of those pew cards and drop it in the plate as it goes by, or introduce yourself to one of the clergy at the door on your way out so we can get to know you a bit better and in invite you into our parish life. Special thanks this morning to our guest organist, Charles Lindsay, thank you so much for being here today. We have a few announcements especially to highlight this morning in your very busy chimes. Um, real House donations, how, uh, donations for the REAL program, the anti-recidivism program here at the Richmond Jail, um, is continuing. Um, throughout the month of August, we are collecting hygiene and underwear items in the bin just outside in the narthex. So be sure when you're going shopping, pick up a few extra items and bring them here on Sunday morning to drop off for that wonderful program. We have two retreats to be sure to note our fall parish retreat at Shrinemont. We have a wonderful speaker named Jerusalem Greer who will be talking about how we as Christians can deal with some of the busyness of our lives. Many of us feel pressured and overwhelmed with the many good things, and so she's suggesting ways, she'll be suggesting ways that we can pare back and really choose what's best in our lives. Um, so that's October 20th to 22nd, and we have an early bird discount through this week, August 15th, so be sure to get online and check that out, or give Anita Lisk a phone call in the office. We also have a Lexio Divina workshop and retreat led by our own brother Leo Campos. Lexio is one of those ancient, uh, one of those ancient forms of using scripture to go deeper in our relationship with God, um, go deeper into our faith. So I warmly invite all of you to consider attending that retreat, but especially to those of y'all in our Bible studies. So it's a wonderful opportunity. Um, be sure to check out that announcement in your bulletin. And, and uh, we also want to warmly invite you outdoors uh, after our worship service for some refreshments afterwards. Stay around, stick around and say hello to everyone that you meet. Finally, another opportunity for hospitality this evening. We still have our wonderful jazz mass going on. Is it five o'clock or 5.30? I get up here and sometimes I go blank on the details, so 5.30. Um, we especially invite you, if you are troubled by what happened in Charlottesville yesterday, we will be using this time um, to reflect on, on that. So we really warmly encourage you to come to that if you are feeling the need to be with some community and some discussion. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. <coughs> Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his death, death. we, we proclaim his resurrection, resurrection. We, we await his coming and and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with James and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
in the power and the glory are now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
this time, we'd like to invite forward to the altar rail any of you who may be celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this week or would like the laying on of hands in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.